Hey guys, it's your Matterhorn. How you doing? I uh, had a request from E. Kelly777 asking if I could go through my Arcteryx stuff. Had uh, a few pieces of uh, Arcteryx gear out there on that uh, snow video that I did, and uh, so yeah, man, happy to do it. I uh, your timing's perfect because I um, I'm in the process of moving all this stuff from one room to another anyway, and so. I just grabbed it all and I'm laying it all out on the bed here. So yeah, happy to go through it. Let me show you what we got. I, um, you know, one of the things, well, two things actually that drive me crazy about Arcteryx stuff. I don't know if this happens to you guys, but one thing is, is a lot of the stuff can look the same. You're looking at these little pictures on the internet sometimes, trying to figure out the difference. Here's two Gore-Tex shells. They both are Gore-Tex shells. They both have hoods. They both have zippers in pretty much the same places. Well, why do they have totally different names, and why is one so much more expensive than the other? Well, the answer lies in the uh, in the confusing naming system. It's always confused me, you know, Theta SL and Beta SR and all these uh, names. So I finally put together a chart, and I'll throw this up in the uh, in the description. If it doesn't fit in there, just send me an email or something, and I'll send it to you. Um, but the models describe sort of the, the use case of the garment and then the suffix afterwards, the two letter abbreviation, basically describes the materials used. It's kind of a simple way of putting it. So for example, an alpha, I'm going to be a more technically focused, more high-end item, a theta, more all-around, usually like a Gore-Tex hard shell, more of like a, a ski cut, a longer cut, probably has a powder skirt, maybe some extra pockets. And then the um, abbreviations that come after basically kind of tells you what material it is. Is it uh, severe weather, meaning like a Gore-Tex Pro shell, or is it more like an LT or an SL, a lightweight or super lightweight, going to be more like a Gore-Tex pack light type of thing. So now when you're looking at those things, if you have that chart in front of you, you can kind of tell by the name of the, uh, the, name of the garment what, uh, what the purpose is and what the material is. So that kind of helps. Um, let's see, I'll start with the, uh, the old kneecaps. I talked about those out there. Love these things. These are, um, like I said, these are expensive, but I think they're worth every penny. I've been wearing kneecaps since I was in the Rangers in the Army a long time ago. Big fan of, uh, of knee pads. And these are, I've always hated every pair I ever had. I, I mean, I always said, when is somebody going to make a better kneecap? And th these are, uh, I don't think they're perfect. They still bug me sometimes, but they're pretty close to perfect. I mean, like I told you guys out there, they really flex. It might be kind of hard to tell. I think one of the reasons they're so expensive is this Kydex shell. is It's it's beveled, and it's really thin on the edges, basically thinned out to nothing right here, which is why it can flex so much. But where it needs to be stiff, it's, it's nice and hard. So it's not just a hunk of plastic that they stuck on some foam. I think there was a lot of care and of, uh, a lot of thought that went into this. They're also made in Canada, which I'm sure is part of the reason why they're 60 bucks. And then they have nice, uh, nice stretchy straps that uh, really are easy to snap and uh, really easy to tighten. So love these kneecaps. By the way, you can get these in different colors now. Um, I don't know if, not a lot of people know this, but Arcteryx has a uh, law enforcement and military division, LEAF, L-E-A-F, law enforcement, and what is it, law, en law enforcement, law enforcement armed forces, I guess is what it stands for. So yeah, just uh, do a search for that, you'll find it, it's basically a whole different website that has uh, all the Arcteryx stuff in uh, military styles, uh, you know, uh, coyote brown colors and olive drab and even uh, camouflage like a uh, multicam. So that's kind of cool. So check that out and then um, I'll just go through this stuff really quick. So this is an Alpha SL hybrid. So technical super light and hybrid because uh, you know, most super light stuff is going to be all Gore-Tex pack light. This one's Gore-Tex pack light in almost all the body except for the shoulders, these panels of the sort of the shoulders in the back here, and then the underarm gussets are Gore-Tex Pro. So it's just a much more durable Gore-Tex in the uh, in the stress areas, and they also put a little bit bigger, more sort of helmet compatible hood on this one. Um, so that's cool to have those a uh, little bit tougher in those areas, especially if you're throwing a log on your shoulder or you're tossing your skis over your shoulder or something like that that can be kind of nice and still um, you know keeps it super light this is basically the same jacket this is an Alpha SL so this is just a Gore-Tex pack light jacket and you can see the hood on this one 
um, you know, folds up into the collar. So the this is basically my sort of keeping the back of the truck for when it rains, walking the dog, maybe a day hike. Uh, when you think it might rain, this is the perfect jacket to like stuff in your pack or something like that. So that's what this one's for. I mean, they're pretty similar. You really don't need both, but somehow I ended up with both of those. Um, so this is a uh, Feta SV. So all mountain, more of a ski jacket, all Gore-Tex Pro Shell. So this is much heavier, much stiffer. It's got a lot more pockets and things like that. Much more heavy-duty zippers. Um, so this is basically my a big helmet compatible hood. This is basically, you know, still just a Gore-Tex shell, but different from those other ones. Much heavier, much stiffer, much tougher. And um, this is basically my ski parka. When I go skiing, I'll, uh, I'll wear this over, um, over a couple different layers, you know, depending on how cold it is. So like that jacket, not real crazy about how stiff and loud it is. I mean, it's just like, it is not, uh, it is not exactly sort of soft and quiet. But um, what do I have here? I got, it's just a fleece that I've had like forever. I don't know, I'm kind of getting out of fleece. I'm just not wearing fleece as much as I used to, mainly because, you know, fleece, wind goes right through fleece and um, wind stopper fleece is great, but it's, it's kind of heavy and uh, not as breathable. Um, so I'm kind of, one of the reasons I'm moving away from fleece is because I'm moving more to stuff like this. And uh, this I was wearing out there on that snow video. This is the, uh, what do they call this? The Adam SV, I think. I mean, sorry, Adam LT. So this is a lightweight, core loft insulated jacket. And uh, extremely compressible. You know, you can keep this in a, in, a, in a little pocket on your backpack or something like that. Very, very warm, but just like ultra comfortable. They're so lightweight and uh, they have just lots of nice little features. Nice big, the zippers are real smooth. They got these uh, nice little uh, zipper pulls on here. Inside the pockets are lined with a nice soft felt lining. And then the whole sides under the arms is um, Polar Tech. Sorry, I'm having trouble getting with the camera here. Polar Tech Power Stretch. So real stretchy under the arms. So these things are just. They feel like you're not even wearing them. They stretch, they move you, they move around with you, and they're very, very cool. And this one smells like a campfire, because this is the one, you know, this is what I whip out of my pack when I'm done hiking and I'm uh, setting up camp. This is the one that I whip out of my pack and, uh, and throw on to stay warm. And then this is the exact same thing in an extra large in black, because this is basically like my throw on and wear around town jacket. I mean, I just love this thing. It's like, Wear this, you know, when you're going out to, you know, you're going to the movies or running to the store or whatever. It's just, uh, it's lightweight, it's comfy, and it's like super warm, totally windproof, very uh, uh, water resistant, you know, if you get a little bit of rain. And then, um, oh, and this is the same thing, but in a vest version. Somebody gave this to me as a gift. I don't wear a lot of vests, but, uh, I mean, it makes sense. I just never get around to trying it. So this is an Adam vest, basically. Same as the jackets, but a vest. So that makes sense. I mean, if, uh, you know, springtime and it gets a little chilly, this is something real small and real compressible that you could that you could pull out of a pocket of your uh, of your backpack and throw on for uh, to stay warm and, and keep the wind off your, your core. Um, and then this is the, I uh, just got these, haven't worn them yet. Wish I would have had these on that last video. These are Adam... Uh, pants. So it's the same thing, but uh, and just basically, I mean, they're like sweatpants. They don't have a zipper. They don't have. They don't even have a drawstring. They're just elastic pants. But they have a full zip that goes from the top to the bottom. So you can uh, you can you don't have to take your boots off to put them on. You literally just wrap them around your legs and then zip them up. And they got some cool drawstrings down on the bottom that pull up and cinch the whole thing closed. They're, uh, so, man, I wish I would have had these out there because I would have slipped these babies on and then my, uh, my legs would have, would have probably been, uh, been a lot warmer. So, looking forward to wearing those. Um, also have a, uh, Arcteryx shirt that I wear. They make some nice shirts with zips. I like this one because it has a really, really big zipper that goes, like, way down, like, to the middle of your stomach. So, when you really need to vent out, I mean, when you're hiking in the summer... That's the perfect, you know, base layer to wear. Dries really fast, and it's just, it weighs nothing. Really, really nice. 
And then I got this the other day. I uh, haven't worn this one yet. The guy at the store left the tag on it. The, uh, where is it? Dude at REI left the anti-theft tag on it. No, I didn't steal it. But um, I got this because when I was out there on that last uh, on that last trip that I videoed, I was just really pretty hot when I was hiking, and I think the thing I was wearing is just a little too thick. So I thought this seemed like uh, pretty thin, had a nice zipper, and um, I was like, I think I'll give that a try for because uh, when I'm out there, all you know, when I'm hiking, all I'm going to have on is something like this and a shell. And I mean, maybe next time I'll just go t-shirt and a shell, even if it's really cold. Um, that's that's about it as far as the clothes. I got a hat. I don't wear that because it's not windstopper. And I mean, it's just, it's like half wool, half uh, acrylic, and the wind goes right through it. But it's basically just a aesthetic hat. Then I got the, um, you guys saw this out there if you watched that video, the, uh, the Ultra 75 pack. I love this pack. I'll probably just do a separate review of that. Don't want to go into that now. But then I thought this this counts as Arc'teryx. This is um, something I haven't even used yet. A uh, ILBE Marine Corps pack. You can get these. These I think are a deal. I, they're a little bit heavy. I don't know. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm, I'm going to do a separate review of this. But this is designed by Arc'teryx. Made by a company called uh, Proper International. I think, and um, this is what the Marines used as their heavy load-bearing backpack. I mean, the thing's enormous. I think it's, like I said, it's designed by Arc'teryx. I think it's based on the, the Bora 80 or something like that. It's designed to carry like 120 pounds. has this separate pack that clicks on the back. I mean, the thing is just enormous, but it's also very heavy. Um, but it does seem pretty cool, and you can... They've flooded the surplus market because they discontinued them. I think because they discovered that it's not compatible with uh, some sort of new body armor that they're using or something. So this is like, I mean, I mean this is like a thousand dollars worth of Arc'teryx backpack that you can get right now out there for like a hundred bucks, you know, anywhere from like 85 to say 150 bucks, depending on the condition. And um, so I'm going to, uh, I'll probably use this next time I go out and then uh, try to do a, a better review of it. So I'm excited about that. So. All right, guys. That's it. Thanks for uh, thanks for going through that. Hope that wasn't too boring. But you know, if you're in the market for some of that stuff, maybe that'll help. All right. I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.